C'est un très très grand plaisir de, de vous avoir ici euh, aujourd'hui. Welcome, welcome to all of you. The Secretary of State for European Affairs, dear Clément, he will join us later by video link. The Director General for Research and Innovation, dear Claire. Ambassador, Councillors, Corporations, Corporation Attaches, a member of the European Parliament, the Director of the European Research and Innovation Area, Directorate General for Research and Innovation, the President of the European Research Council, dear Maria, the Head of Unit for Higher Education, Directorate General for Education, Youth, Sport and Culture, the President of France Université, dear Manuel, Representatives of European Universities, the President of ENQUA, dear Douglas, Presidents and Representatives of Evaluation and Quality Assurance Agencies, the Director of ECAR, the Representative of the European University Association, the Representative of the European Associations, Association of Institutions in Higher Education, Representatives of Students and Young Doctors and Researchers, the representatives of the world of higher education and research, dear colleagues, dear friends. It's a pleasure for me to be with you and to open this day under the French presidency of the Council of the European Union on assessment as an essential step towards the European higher education and research area. I would like to thank all the institutions present here who have given their support to the realization of this project. This day demonstrates HLS desire to strengthen its links between actors and decision makers in higher education research and assessment. The French presidency has sponsored numerous events involving the French and European higher education research communities. This day is a high point because the European presidency, which only lasts six months, is an ex exceptional opportunity to develop propose and move forward. We would like to thank especially the representatives of the next countries to hold the presidency. Our counterparts, Petr Noskiewicz, member of the board of directors of the National Accreditation Bureau of the Czech Republic, uh, the diplomatic representation of the Czech Republic in France, as well as Anders Söderholm, director general of the Swedish Higher Education Authority, for their contribution and for being with us. We are also fortunate to welcome the founders of the ESGs, the standards and guidelines for quality assurance in the European higher education area. We hope that we will together build on the initiative begun by the European approach for quality assurance of joint degrees framework after 16 of March. I cannot start this day without thinking about the dramatic events unfolding in front of us. The European education space has been deeply affected, hit by the violence, moved by the resilience of the re Ukrainian people. HCS relationship with the Ukrainian National Assessment Agency, as well as with several of Ukraine historic universities has been strengthened. These events also confront us with the European challenges to be met. In particular, that of the place of a Europe of knowledge on the international scene. Assessment is a powerful lever for building this European area. New projects are ahead of us. The main ones being the continued creation and consolidation of European universities, their joint degrees, lifelong learning, through, for example, micro-credentials, the promotion of European curricula and research in the world, the rapid digitalization of higher education, as well as graduates and researchers' employability. As its role is to observe and analyze these transformations at work, assessment is an essential tool in the process of enhancing and affirming Europe's place on the international stage. Together today, we will exchange views on our models, share our practices, and I'm sure lay the foundations for new cooperation. We have designed this day around three key moments. 
The first one aims to assess the strengths and weaknesses of the European higher education research and innovation landscape on the international scene through the higher education research innovation employability continuum. Indeed, each of these, com of these components are, is sometimes thought of and evaluated separately. Whereas this continuum, in our view, should be considered as a whole to serve graduates and society better. This is why the HCRS has put in place an integrated reference framework in 2021, as all these components form a single system. The second moment seeks to enable a better representation of the new element to be dealt with by us all in order to create together assessment tools better adapted to the European scale. How can we support the development of European universities, especially through their assessment process? I had the opportunity to witness their creation when few believed in them and they continue to flourish. They are a promising step forward in putting the high, European higher education research and innovation system on the international stage, and they must be supported and enhanced through evaluation. Another subject will be discussed today, that of the European approach for quality assurance of joint degrees. This reference framework is undoubtedly a real advance. However, it is not yet well adapted to the evaluation of PhDs, research, innovation, employability, lifelong learning, and distance learning. Thanks to the strength of conviction of the ministers and of its creators, this reference system has laid the foundation for the evaluation of joint programs at the European Union level based on the ESGs. But shouldn't we go further, make them more robust for the evaluation of Erasmus Plus and Erasmus Mundus master's programs, and more broadly of all European university programs? Moreover, while the European approach for quality assurance of joint degrees strengthens the links between member countries, assessment by a national agency does not yet lead to automatic recognition and accreditation by the national uh, governments of other member institutions, which constitute the joint degrees. After this phase of experimentation and testing of the Euro European approach framework, it would be, would be appropriate to make this automatic recognition possible. The third and final part will enable us to address the ways in which research assessment is confronted with the promising initiatives taken by the research ministers and by the European Commission, which gave an impetus at the end of 2021. All have expressed the need to develop research assessment. For the HTRS, it is essential to bring together the evaluation of higher education and research or to link the evaluation of research to that of academic programs. After a consultation, with a large number of stakeholders, the Commission published a text that lays the foundation for an overhaul of research assessment to achieve a more qualitative assessment. One that is careful to make responsible use of quantitative indicators, careful to take into account the impact of all research activities, the full diversity of academic disciplines, the full diversity of the missions and activities of researchers and their careers. On this basis, more than 260 institutions, mainly from Europe, expressed their interest in joining a coalition of stakeholders committed to developing their evaluation practices according to these principles. This development is awaking strong interest in France. The European Open Science Conference held in Paris last month launched the Paris Call for Research Assessment, which has received strong support. HCS is fully committed to these developments, which are of major importance and to which we will return in a session this afternoon. I would like to briefly mention some of the elements of this reform that we consider particularly important. Strike a balance between quantitative and qualitative assessment to break away from the race towards ex excessive production. Ensure consistency between all levels 
all levels of research assessment, individual, individual assessment of researchers, project assessment submitted to national or European funding agencies, assessment of research laboratories, and assessment of institutions, universities, and research organizations. All these assessments form an interconnected system. The harmonization of all these levels of assessment is a challenge and an obligation for us all. We must all work on it together. And finally, guarantee the diversity of contributions, profiles, and backgrounds of researchers. These concerns are essential to give European research the confidence and transparency it needs to be placed at the service of society and recognized internationally. I would like to thank, finally, once again, the 500 registered participants who follow us online, and all of you who have responded enthusiastically, enthusiastically to our invitation. I hope that this day will be an opportunity for constructive and fruitful exchanges. Thank you very much for your attention. I welcome and give the floor to Dominique Rousset, the journalist who will moderate the whole event. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Président. Thank you very much, Mr. President. With you all as a moderator for our three sessions that have been introduced by Thierry Coulon, um, which we would like to be as interactive as possible between your speakers on site and online, since you know we have a lot of people online too. So we will manage to give you some time at the end of each round table for your questions and comments, and we hope there will be. And uh, I will also receive them on a tablet during the discussion. So the three sessions during the day divided in, in right into one table. The first session about the place of the European higher education and research ecosystem, as has been said, on an international scale. We will insist on that point. Then the second session um, about the ESJ with their founding fathers, as he had been said too, and another, uh, on another hand, with points of views from the European universities. Then after that, in the afternoon, we have a third session, which will be more specifically devoted to research, at first with European agencies, then in the following round table, the last one, we'll focus on the challenges to be dealt with in the future, but all those involved in research, of course, all of you are also evaluators. Now it's time for the um, introduction speeches. And I would just call to Mrs. Claire Giry. She's the only one <laughs> with us for this introduction. Please, would you like uh, to sit here next to me to join us with Thierry Coulon, who might stay with us. Um, and we will all listen together to Clément Beaune. Clément Beaune, I say it in French, Secrétaire d'État auprès du ministre de l'Europe et des Affaires étrangères en France, chargé des affaires européennes. Il va nous commenter comment la dimension internationale de l'ESRI est intégrée en tant que moteur. Il va nous parler de comment la dimension internationale est intégrée en tant que moteur de l'ESRI. Uh, under the uh, French presidency. Let's listen to Clément Beaune. This was recorded very, uh, very little time before this meeting. Mr. President, dear Thierry Coulon, ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure to speak to you even via this uh, video link to open this conference on the evaluation of research in Europe and also of higher education. On the occasion of the French presidency of the Council of the European Union, we've wanted to insist on the emphasis put on research, education and innovation at a European level. As you know, the scientific community has fought hard together with several countries, including France, to generate these achievements with considerably increased budgets allocated to research, in particular for the latest European budget planning for the period 2021-2027, over a 30% increase for Horizon Europe. As regards mobility with Erasmus, we've almost doubled European funding. In our research policy, we've also put the emphasis on excellence. And I'd like to hail the 15th anniversary of the European Research Council based on a belief in fundamental research, excellence, and attracting new talents in Europe. 
In order for research, higher education and innovation to be enhanced, we need, let's be clear about it, evaluation and to compare our evaluation methods across agencies and across European instruments. That is precisely what you're doing today. We'll no doubt have to adapt this evaluation system to enrich it and to factor in new European challenges. I'd like to speak of the continuum between education, research and innovation that is so crucial within the European research area that is under construction. And you are at the heart of this evaluation reform that enables us to take into account the quality of that continuum. We will also need to rethink our curricula. As you know, the French president, Emmanuel Macron, has early as 2017, in a speech he gave at the Sorbonne, shared his European universities initiative that was launched a few weeks later, which is now a reality and is spreading wave after wave all across our continent. It will also translate into more integration between curricula and the development of more joint degrees, which will be a challenge in terms of evaluation. Evaluation is a barometer, helping us measure the quality of education and research in Europe, which is why we're counting on you to exchange ideas and methods so that evaluation can help strengthen the very substance of research and education on the continent. Ours is a continent of knowledge, reason, science and enlightenment. We need that even more today, faced with major disruptions in Europe and around the world. Thank you for your dedication. I wish you fruitful debates. See you soon. Thank you very much, Mr. Bone. Uh, is uh, Ms. Michaela Sojtodba online? MEP and Rapporteur on the higher education area. Uh, can you hear us, Ms. Sojtodba? Yes, I can hear you. I can see you very well. Thank you very much. Good morning. We'll listen to you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Um, so, I am very happy that I can share our European Parliament approach. I will speak uh, on the uh, of uh, on behalf of the uh, Court Committee of European Parliament, and I would like to say that uh, this conference, this meeting, is happening in the time when people are dying close to our borders, and they, uh, when they are giving their lives for the values that the EU that the EU is based on like uh, our, my previous uh, speakers said too so ukraine want to join the EU and we would uh, and we should support them in this decision ukraine has made significant progress in the higher education uh, during the last few years, also because it is a part of the Bologna process. I think it was the Mr. Uh, Thierry Coulon uh, who uh, mentioned and uh, who uh, mentioned the, the same uh, things. Let me share a few points based on the European Commission's implementation report on the Bologna process, and I would like to also mention how we included this topic in the approach of the European Parliament for the European education area. So the European higher education area is the part of the uh, European uh, education, excuse me, the European higher education area is the part of the European education area. So uh, we, um, we uh, consider this, uh, this, uh, we, and we uh, have this uh, uh, comprehensive approach, and uh, the, and we consider the that the European higher education area is based on the Bologna process, and the evaluation is an important part of this. One of the most significant features and drivers of change in the European higher education area has been the development of higher education quality assurance system. We should recognize the qualitative indicators, indicators and development of external and quality assurance. This has been a striking phenomenon throughout the Bologna process. So we recognize national quality assurance system and we have been developing in the last few years the European quality assurance with the register in order to guarantee the compliance. So it is the tool of the European approach to the quality assurance of joint programs and like previous speakers also Mr.
Thierry Coulon mentioned, it is up to you, stakeholders and representatives of the higher education, to estimate how the system is working. Uh, the other point is automatic recognition, which was set as a long-term objective in the European education area in 2012 uh, for recognition of comparable degrees. Since then, we have been on the road to achieving it. The rise of a quality assurance in higher education is one of the most remarkable developments with uh, within the sector in the last two decades, even though the European approach to the quality assurance and automatic mutual recognition are the two main necessary steps, their realization is, I can say, slow. <laughs> However, after two decades of Bologna reforms, almost all countries now have internal and external quality assurance system in place. This is a very important, important achievement. The Council's recommendation last year asked the mutual recognition by 2025 throughout the EU. My opinion is that we should support this process more from the EU level. That's why um, I, as a reporter of the European education area, have emphasized the Bologna process as the reference to learn from experiences with its implementation. The European Parliament stresses that the European education area should be a millstone in the recognition of diplomas and qualification and learning outcomes, including in vocational and education training, which is important part. A specific tool might be European micro-credentials, which is the ongoing new instrument, which is being discussed now in the Council. My vision is that it might have a good start with a pilot project. This is the same idea uh, as for the Centre of the Vocational Excellence, which is also ongoing, just starting pilot project now uh, within the programme uh, New Erasmus Plus. 2021-2027. So we have pilot project for um, centers of vocational excellence. And I think if we would like really achieve the micro-credentials, like some new tools for mutual recognition, we should uh, do we should do this uh, step forward. Or our European Parliament report calls for the shared holistic approach, and we call for establishment of the concrete strategic education framework with the common targets and benchmarks. Uh, because we see here some, some uh, I can say, split <laughs> between uh, institutions. As you know, the benchmark of the ET 2020, the tertiary education attainment was 40%, which was achieved. The Council 2021 has decided the target should be set at 45%, and the Commission, in its communication, calls for a statement for 50%. There is not the same uh, numbers. So, what is the best? <laughs> My opinion is we would, we should focus on the quality. Uh, we are uh, on the pathway towards improving our results, especially in higher education and quality. So I think that uh, also this meeting, this conference of the French presidency could help, could contribute in this discussion. Uh, and uh, you can count with us, with European Parliament, like a par strong partner, and uh, I would like to say that you are all welcomed at uh, our CUT committee. I wish you all the best and I am looking towards a cooperation with you uh, on, on this uh, higher education uh, quality system. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Sochlova. Um, we'll now listen to Mrs. Claire Chiry. I haven't introduced her yet. Um, would you like to? Uh, up to you. Okay. 
<laughs> that's fine. Claire Giry, uh, uh, Director General for Research and Innovation. That's the Minister of Higher Education, Research and Innovation in France. Madame, on va vous entendre à votre tour. Avec plaisir. Dear Madam, over to you. Is the microphone working? Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Able to do everything. Thank yeah. you, Thierry. <laughs> Merci. Uh, voilà, je suis, je me sens plus en face de vous. Uh, dans All cette... right. So now I feel better. I'm standing just here in front of you, ladies and gentlemen, ambassadors, madam, a uh, European member of Parliament, who you've just heard from, uh, dear Thierry, ladies and gentlemen, uh, agency directors, and dear colleagues. It is really a pleasure for me to be with you today because evaluation is really a key point of uh, public research policies and certainly a lever for action for European research. And that is why we are together today. So it is a time for exchange, which is going to be extremely interesting and which is also a source of great pleasure when we can take off our masks here for the first time this week in France to see all of you. The international context is very difficult, but it's important to continue with these exchanges. This evaluation is a complex issue which mobilizes many different stakeholders uh, at many different levels. And I would like to start by stating that irrespective of all the transformations in our different countries and the different systems of higher education, of research and innovation, evaluation by peers remains an essential pillar. In 2012, researchers from the field uh, on the international level uh, considered and, and had a thinking process about evaluation, which led to the San Francisco Declaration, which is referred to as DORA. And this strongly criticizes the impact factor as an indicator, which is often used, often abusively really, uh, as uh, to evaluate the quality of research, despite the fact that it wasn't uh, designed to evaluate the quality of articles. This declaration was signed by 22 French institutions. The last four have just signed it. I'm going to mention them because that's all, it's very recent. Ex Marseille, Paris Saclay, the H series itself, and the Academie des Sciences. So the, in February 2022, we had the Open Science Days, and at the French level, we brought together the signatories of this declaration in the framework of a working group. The idea was to say that we really had to ask ourselves the question beyond the intentions of the signature of the agreement to see uh, and see in the process what happens and how to act, because it's not quite that simple, really. The uh, discussions uh, that took place were difficulties to be able to implement good practice from DORA in their own context with their own stakeholders and everyone is different. And together they drafted the Paris call on research, which was made public at the European Conference on Open Science, which was organized in the framework of the French presidency of the European Union that was supposed to take place at the Académie des Sciences, but that in ended up being online. This Paris call was uh, put to our steering committee for open science, which brings together all the French institutions concerned, and there was a unanimous vote. So we have a strong commitment from French stakeholders, which I would like to emphasize, which I think is very important for uh, what the, the path forward. So it shows the French commitment to constituting a European coalition of establishments, institutions, to focus on a reform for evaluation of research this evaluation will be in line with DORA and will be part of the commitment that has been discussed in the framework of this intervention to go beyond publication, publishing as the sole criteria. The idea here is to favor the diversity of research productions. Of course, there'll still be publication, pre-publication, data, methods, software, codes, patents, and their societal impact and the activities linked to innovation, training, and public commitment. It is always possible to join the 200 institutions who are already part of this European coalition, which will make it possible to coordinate action at the, at the European level, which is, of course, absolutely essential to be able to harmonize principles and converge systems. By nature, research is international, so we really need this dimension. In the list of the drafters of the Articles of Association, the statutes of the coalition, so there are uh, representatives of CNRS and HCRS, so we're happy to see that France is seriously involved here. Uh, uh, we 
we had we were talking about open science but we couldn't put a focus only on publication because there is such a broad range of activities which contribute to knowledge so the paris call encourages uh, the production of data software everything that encourages uh, knowledge and not only articles i was very pleased to award the first uh, open science prize and this was at the heart of the, th the thinking that we had on the 4th and 5th of February 2022, so very recently, with over 2,000 people following the conference. So we felt that there was a historic uh, engagement and to have the online event allowed us to have a broad participation from many different people. It was an international colloquium on open science, which showed the dynamic and the desire of the scientific committee in France and in Europe. So you understand that there is a French movement, there's a European movement in favor of these developments, and that you probably all know of in your different roles. It is also a global movement, the UNESCO recommendation on open science unanimously voted last November, calls on member on, on member institutions to favor responsible practices in research and evaluation of researchers to encourage quality science rec recognizing the diversity of activities and missions of research. Of course, we need place for all talents, we need room room for all talents for everyone's talents and the name of a program in the netherlands uh, is presented at the ozak conference and uh, it constitutes in itself an entire program the san francisco declaration dora also insists on transparency and great openness in data and methods which make it possible to calculate the indicators that we use this might strike you as more technical but it's also key because the scientific community is free to choose its dashboard choices and evolution. And that is why France uh, supports open citations, which uh, is a group of uh, open global knowledge, which will be shared. This uh, future of open and inclusive indicators won't be uh, done in a single day. Of course, it has to be built up, but it's essential to establish the basis to ask the right questions for genuine independence in this field. We need this to be able to um, uh, shape our indicators, our research landscape and control its destiny. In conclusion, I am aware that many of these transformations will take time, but this is normal. And uh, we have, we must give value to what we consider as important today. It's more difficult. It's more subtle than just met metrics. Uh, but it has to have meaning, and I believe it will be a driving force for our European research. Thank you.